And uh, I'm going to speak about just some general terms of, of, of how I go about uh, creating a, a photograph. I do have one oddball picture in, in the back that I'll talk about, which, which you know is not a traditional landscape, it's, it's a building. So uh, there's a reason I, I put that in uh, at the last minute because of something that happened uh, earlier this week. So I'm influenced by Hudson River painters. I like that painterly look at that. You know, this is this is like my signature print. I call in Swiss Spurs in the past, and I like the purity of a landscape. Uh, I, I like oftentimes the the panoramic uh, aspect ratio because that forces you, in my opinion, it forces you to look at the landscape in a in a different way from. Uh, the traditional aspect ratios. Uh, I'm influenced, you know, by Ansel Adams, uh, Michael Kenna, although he, he does black and white. I like that, uh, the, 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 the silkiness of water, the, 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 the simple uh, shapes. Uh, you know, I, I might do it in color where he, he would do it in black and white. Uh, there's one artist that I just became aware of, Hugo Barr, and he was an artist, um, Austrian artist from 1863 to 1912. I think he died when he was 39 years old. I can't say I was influenced by him because I just became aware of him like two weeks ago. I was on the internet and I came across some paintings. I said, oh, I love, I love his composition. And I, the more I looked at it, it's like our composition style parallels each other. So, uh, as a case in point, you know, he often puts uh, trees in, the, in his foreground, and I do that often. So, that's something I'm going to uh, study and um, see if I can get some ins inspiration. From him, I, I, in general, I call my my theme of work the soul of the landscape. And because I photograph mostly in New England, there's a couple, you know, images here that are not New England. But for mostly New England, has more of the quieter, diminutive landscape. It's not the the, 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 the grand landscape of the West. So when I photograph something, I'm not necessarily trying to define a, a certain area, a landmark. It's just the general landscape, the, the essence, the feel of the landscape. And uh, the New England landscapes can be wonderfully chaotic. The, the trees you know, go every which way, and, and the light forms in every which way. So, it, it, it's, it's photographing different than, than uh, subjects out west. And, you, you, you know, we show our work to uh, a lot of people, and when people, if somebody says to me, why did you take that? To me, that's the difficult, I, I don't like that question. To me, when they say, why did you take that, means I'm not connecting with what you're to show it. I don't get it. But a lot of times people say, how did you take that? And I like that question because now it's like something's resonating with me. How did you do that? You know, I've, I've seen, I've been there. I didn't see that. How did you take that? I had an exhibit uh, in January at um, uh, a library in, in Connecticut, and I got an email from somebody and praising my work. And I'm gonna, I loved what he said about it. And this is what he said in, in the email. I like how the composition moves the eye in a way that is very musical. I think of it as the music that was playing down the street past various houses. The music lets you know which party you may want to walk into, and once you walk into it, in, in, once you walk in, it takes you dancing. And, you know, I, I wrote 
him back. I said, thank you for that, though, those kind words. I said, the way you described it, I thought about it, and I said, that's exactly what I do when I see a scene. You start doing a dance, you know, like this, this scene. I was standing in the water, and originally, the uh, the sun it was it was very foggy. There there was no sunbeams, and I I was just focused on um, just just this area. And I looked up and I saw the the sunbeams. I said, Oh my God! And I had to start doing the dance. You know, I'm moving this way. I know I have just a very short amount of time to take a photograph, and I'm looking always. You know. How is everything going to be placed? So it's the dance that, that, that we do that, that helps form an, an image. I have a photographer friend, uh, Sean Kernan, and he describes you know, a photograph as a collection of objects, but more than that. It's an arrangement of elements that make a certain harmony, a sense of balance, a sense of light, a resonance, and then it becomes alive. So our key is to do this dance, you know, as we're going by a scene, and I don't know how many times I, I, I'm out with my wife, and I'll we'll be taking a walk or something, oh, I said, oh, there's a potential photograph. And she looks, she says, what do you see? And that is the magic that we have, that we, we can look at a scene and, and we're, we hear the music and it wants to draw us into it and discover it. And that is really, I think, the, the force behind what we have to do to create a commanding image. I often say that with nature landscape, that the, the beauty of the landscape is not revealed with a cooperative ease, which means we really have to work at it. Um, this is, is like a signature image for me because I love Hudson River painter style. This is the Connecticut River. I bet I, I, I saw this seen a number of times, or I saw the elements a number of times. I thought it was in the middle of the day, or it was very foggy. Not everything was coming together. I had to go back many, many times waiting for all those elements to come together. There was one day, it was very foggy, I was there at 5.15 in the morning, which we met, really I had to get up at 4.15. I'm standing in the water, I have uh, waders on, got my camera, you know, the water is mucky and I'm, I'm walking very carefully so that I don't uh, fall. And I'm just watching and waiting, hoping that all the elements come together. One hour later, At 5.15, the, the sun broke through the clouds and created this image. Looking back at my metadata, I took three exposures within 15 seconds, and then I stopped. A scene like this, you would think that I would start moving around different, different, loca different angles and all. I just stopped which meant to me that that cooperative ease was now done. You know, it gave you 15 seconds. You, you, the sun was now too bright. Something, something changed where I said, it, it's over now. And this image, you know, I could look at it and, and, and say, well, it, it just makes me feel good. Or you can go deeper into the allegoric meaning, which I seldom do. But for this image, you know, it, 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 
it, it parallels the Hudson River painters in, in so many ways. You've got the luminous sky, you know, the, the, the warm glow of the sun, you've got a broken tree, uh, you've got serene water, you, you've got the, the elements of uh, birth and death, you know, you've got the, 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 the new grasses, you've got a, a tidal flow in the Connecticut River, so you've got uh, the symbol, symbolism of uh, a new beginning, you know, new nutrients coming into the, into the, uh, the shore to, 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 to feed the, the grasses. You've got death. You, you have a whole cycle of, of life and death. So that's a very deep allegoric uh, uh, meaning behind the photograph. But really it was, I just liked the way it looked. Uh, it just resonated with me. Uh, you know, at some point in time you have to give yourself permission to break some rules to create the feeling that you want. Um, and, and I can't tell you why I like that. See, I, the same thing here. I place trees left and right. I, I've looked through, you know, composition books and there's some people that say, oh, never do that, never do that, X, X, wrong. Say, well, I guess, guess I'm wrong. But, it, 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 it's it's the way I want to present it. Um, do we have the time? Never mind the time. Okay. <laughs> we'll turn to the back uh, a little bit. Maybe it'll be easier if I just bring them up front. It'll be easier. Right? Yeah, we can turn. That's all right. ago I had different uh, different images for the show. I just kept changing it. And this one I put in at the last minute. There's a difference here. I'm beginning to alter photos more than I have in the past. This is not really altered. That's not altered. This isn't altered, you know. If, if I had seen a, a, a Coke can here, I would have taken that out. But I don't, I don't really change things. I took this photograph in 2011, but I printed it three weeks ago. I, I did make a, a typical Ansel Adams black and white of it, which I like, but I just wanted something different. So I'm now experimenting with changing tones to to create that different feeling, that different, the, the, the different voice. <clears throat> and I'll experiment with that. I, I won't completely change. I'll still do this traditional, but I am, I am experimenting now with, with a change of, of tones to create a different, different <coughs> feeling. This particular image, uh, I introduced to the world um, in December. It happened to be on uh, the cover of a, a magazine. And I got a lot of response from people. People bought the picture. And I got comments like, this is the best photograph this magazine has put on the cover. You know, a lot of, a lot of praise. Monday, now this is in December, it's a winter shot, you kind of expect people to be into it. Monday I get an email from somebody I don't know, saying, hey, I just saw your red barn picture. I want that. <clears throat> it's springtime. You know, it's, it's just, to me it was like, something's, something connected with him. So I, I asked him, where, where did you see this photograph? He said, I was in a frame shop. It was being framed. It hadn't been picked up yet. I saw it. I want it. If my objective is to share photographs with people, I broke rules to create this. You know, what we were saying early on, 
you know, you, you have to learn exposure, you know, the, you, you, your scale of lights to darks, composition, things like that. Painters have always given themselves permission to alter a scene. And when we had traditional photography, we could do that, but not like we can with digital. This particular scene, it was a snowy day. I got in my car, it's windy, it's snowy. I'm worried more about getting the shot before the snow falls on the lens and, and just destroys the, the optics. So I'm very quickly, and all I see is a red barn. That's all I see, this, this, this red barn and all this white. And I, I, I take the photograph. And when I get home, the camera saw the red barn. It saw the snow. It had texture in the snow. It actually, I had not seen, it had some very distracting trees in the background. I said, ah, that's not what I saw. So I made the decision that this photograph I was going to alter quite a bit. I took out the tree. There was a power line here. I took that out. I broke the rules with exposure. I just blew it all out. I left this. This was the, the walkway. Just, just a little bit there. So broke all the rules, but yet It's, it's resonating with people. It, it's, it's now a barn that is not like, oh, I know where that barn is. It's like, oh, it's, it's just, it, it's a barn that represents New England. So, some people might argue, well, you know, taking this out, doing that, if, if you really, it's not true true photography, you know, you're altering it to, 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 but if my objective is to make art that people want to enjoy, and if that's what they're connecting with, I don't think it's wrong. Will I always do that? No. But I will keep that in my mind now, that what can I do to a photograph to put the elements together to make an image that many, many people can look at, can resonate with, can, can, can enjoy.